Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series, which we're playing as Lloyd's Ministry. Hmm. We're led by Solomon. May not say that way, but the Pilgrim, the Patriarch, the Father of the Nation. The name Solomon Bouchard is known for and far and wide among those who still dare to believe in these desperate times. An old man preaching the good word of Christ while holding speeches to rival those of the past. A former citizen of the atheist Canadian People's Front. Solomon dared to give the people hope as it came all crumbling down around them, offering services to the damned and delirious out of the own good of his heart. As his work continued, he started to gain a following. And when the CPF finally broke down, he elected to bring the people to salvation in the ramshackle town of Lloydminster. Years followed, and Lloydminster remains a haven for the wayward. But with Solomon, driven to isolation through grief and apathy, one must wonder if it will continue to stay that way. But the suppliers without a name. The bulk of the weapons of the Canadian People's Front employed against American invaders were provided by China, and yet another key player skulked in the shadows. A container marooned off the coast here, a few smuggled goods there, and a handful of provisions disguised as foreign aid for good measure. But amidst all the trinkets and baubles lied the greatest treasure of them all. Tanks. A difference in doctrine. In the days following the Great War, the CPF quickly seized most of the Western Canada and began readying itself to march on Toronto and Ontario, but the Front would have to do well to heed the lessons of history for it rarely been kind to empires. From Russia with love. Our legacy does not stem from the desperate Canadian people, nor the Chinese who saw the opportunity in dire times. Our legacy comes from Russia. We can trace a heritage to an expedition of tank advisors sent to Canada to teach CPF soldiers how to use their tanks against the American occupation forces, the bombs having turned their short tenure into a permanent affair. Over time, we came to adopt more than just a knowledge of weapons. We fully inherited their religion, culture, and history. We merged their realities with our own to create something new in terms of the storms of war. Our soldiers became the spear of a new movement, a force of unmatched prowess across the waste. We inherited much from our forefathers' past, which most important was Soviet production, the pinnacle of industrial prowess, Soviet morale, the hand that crushed fascism. Well, basically, we got two routes here. We can go with the Solomon guy, probably. I think this is this route or something like that. The wake-up call. Or we can go down with our, our father's daughter, which I think for our first campaign, we're going to go down this way, which will give us eventually, I think, more tanks. And it's more of the Red Guard and whatnot. Intermediate Air Tech. Also, we're very poor on tech right now. It's really bad. Holy cow. One of the worst nations to start off in terms of uh, other sophisticated tech, vehicle tech. Um, one of the absolute worst nations for technology. And this one, you can get, like, Power Armor. Which I like. I mean, we have uh, some Wild Strawberry drink here to keep us nice and refreshed. Um, and Intermediate. I don't know if we have Sophisticated... Uh, if we get sophisticated power armor tech, I would totally go this way, but we don't. This is not bad, too, over here. You get a lot more population, which is fantastic. Um, but we do get sophisticated vehicle tech, which I do like quite a bit. And if you can choose a nation to play as them, generally, I would I would really want to. So we're going to go with Soviet production. You know, we can, you can always buy more. Soviet morale. Um, orthodoxy, communism, backed by tanks. Lloyd's ministry was never expected to be long for this world. It was birthed by a self-proclaimed patriarch who took it upon himself to lead his people out of Rudman as Moses to Egypt. Even Solomon's most devout followers expected to meet a harsh end, be it the hands of the frigid cold or the armies of the Central Committee. But eventually, despite the impossible odds, they reached their promised land. An unexpected guardian will be next after we read about empires come and go. Nothing lasts forever, and it is an inescapable fact of life. One which humanity has been fighting against since the start of its history. The Canadian People's Front proved no exception to this rule. Bit by bit, piece by piece, each backstab and rivalry brought it closer to its end. It all culminated in a shattering. A mass power struggle led to the succession of three, uh, Amy Therese as a new general secretary. A vile creature who soared to the top through illicit means, her lust for power knew no bounds, and nothing was beneath her in her quest to attain it. It only took moments after her ascension to general secretary of the CPF that the people declared independence. Like dominoes, they fell, breaking free from her yoke, the CPF was no more. Patriarch Solomon was an unimportant man during all this, passionately preaching the good book to any or whom any would listen. He, like many others, sought freedom while, from the ensuing chaos. He proposed a bold plan, he and his group, which numbered in the thousands would march east to claim our occupied lands, creating their own state. The journey was long and fraught with many difficulties, but by God's grace, they did make it. Here's a tank to play. It's not too bad. Tankers. Huh. And Believer's Militia. Um, We're going to need some serious militia here. Do we have any money? We have a thousand monies. We've got nothing. Okay. Through preservation, the faith was strengthened. Within des desperation, the light is found. Well, we went right last time. This makes more sense. So let's keep going to the right side here. And then two-way crossing. Lloyd's ministry finds itself at a pivotal crossroads. 
with the nation grappling with grief and internal discord, a decisive path must be chosen. Will steadfast new leader merge to guide Lloyd's ministry through its darkest hour, or will the old elite stay in power, deepening the nation's woes through dissent and division? An unexpected guardian. Ask any member of the CPF what they thought about Spears tanks, and you get numerous answers. Safety, tyranny, protection, and might all come typically to mind, but I would agree on one thing. They represented power. When the people, a Lloyd Minster, heard the rumble of tanks slowly approaching, they believed that they may as well have been the end of their ill fated expedition. They prepared for the end to come, making peace with God. But against all expectations, the blast never came, not a single shell was fired. Uh, you got the most attack. The tanks took, stood eerily outside, still, or still outside, the recently reclaimed town as if sizing up their opposition. Snow blew heavily around them, isolating them from the rest of the world. Their fate would be decided at this very moment. A uh, voice called out, called out of the storm, emerging from wherever the tank stood. It called for Solomon, the patriarch followed the call. From that day onward, life began to emerge in Lloydminster. A deal was forged between Solomon and the spear's head, Lydia Donoski. They no longer stood alone, and the spears would shield the growing ministry from any that would seek harm to them. United in faith, gunpowder, and sacred steel. Ooh, tank equipment production cost goes down. More production, more breakthrough, and better tank defense. Uh, Joe Teneman, or Ellis. Oh, my bad. That is my mouse. Nikoshi? Cool. Um, you know, we might just want to go with, instead of this guy. I chose this guy because he's really good on attack and defense. Um, uh, but, I, we're going down to the Katharina, and she's not very well developed, I guess you could say. I mean, she's level 4, but her attack is just not very good. She's very good on supply consumption, though. Which actually would come in handy. You know what? Yeah, oh, Scott was going to go to Katharina. She's flexible. Generally, I don't choose that one, but that's alright. Smooth talker. Ferocious. Junk rounds. Equipment capture ratio would be probably pretty good. Ooh. But get more attack. I like the attack. We're going to use tanks here. Light touch. Ghoul infantry. Infantry. Uh, obviously, we have to go with heavyweight. We like our women heavy. Anyways. Um, Red Army Prayers. Every soldier of the ministry is out there with the Red Army's prayers, a pocketbook combining the good word of Christ and Mark. It's an essential during these long nights sitting in, in a tank. Uh, that's a case. Uh, oh, I keep thinking we're at the Strath Commune. No, we're over here. And encirclements are going to be the name of the game, because we're not going to be able to win without encirclements. So, care for thy neighbor. Well, we're going to go when we were at war. In the Crucible of Lloyd's ministry, a new chapter unfolds amidst the whispers of revolution. With a nation poised on the brink of change, uh, a young flame emerges to lead the charge. As Ekaterina assumes the reins of power, her revolutionary spirit ignites hope and defiance in equal measure. The stage is set for the bold campaign that will reshape the destiny of Lloyd's ministry and its people. Her campaign has begun, or will begin, and with her factions, decisions have been unlocked. And so, add decisions as the game goes on. Discretion, my old friend. The deep and personal friendship between Patriarch Solomon and spear leaders Lydia and Ekaterina was once a beautiful thing, and the cooperation was a pride and joy of Lloyd's ministers and humble people. After Lydia's death, however, uh, Solomon found himself frozen by grief and unable to cope with her loss. In her wake, apathy has slowly started to grip the state, with even the church becoming more insular and self-centered. A common man cries out for a solution, hoping that the ministry might yet return to the family it once was. Factionalism is taking hold, dividing the slowly decaying church and the revolutionary tankers of the sphere. <clears throat> Patriarch Solomon harbors hope he can keep things together. Commander Ekaterina has seen Solomon's in action and doesn't believe hope for a peaceful way forward is possible. The followers rally behind them with the momentum of expectation at their backs. Both know there's only one way forward, to save the city themselves or to die trying. Deuteronomy 31.6 <clears throat> Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Be on guard. Stand firm in their faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Like daggers in our back. Or know your enemy. The leaf that makes the flower. Honor the fallen. I like the stability first. The leaf that makes the flower. As the Catherine and her supporters weave their way through Lloyd Minster's intricate political web, a transformation begins to take hold. Through clandestine machinations and bold displays of leadership, they lay the groundwork for a burgeoning base of support. As whispers of change spread, so too does the tide of popular sentiment, swelling the ranks of those rallying behind Catherine's vision for the nation. Military unrest. Not good. A vacant cabinet. Not good. Oh, that's really bad. Just how long is eternity? Sent by the Soviet Union to support the Canadian independence movement, the advisors were only supposed to remain for a short amount of time. That was until the bombs fell and their mission soon became the prison. Trapped in foreign lands for centuries, our once great cabinet of commanders and advisors has fallen into a den of filthy, feral beasts. Decades of knowledge within their rotted brain turned to nothing but dust. As such, our operational capabilities are severely weakened. 
It is only through the perseverance of Sava Dukov that we can continue to hold on to our core. Yet even he feels the bell tolling for him in his slowly fracturing mind, he will continue to give his all for the Ministry, no matter how fearful he may be of the consequences. Uh, honoring the Fallen, amidst a flurry of preparations for the impending revolution, Ekaterina finds herself grappling with the weight of Lydia's passing. Soviet morale, good. Desperation, that's interesting. And like I see the CPF spear, among the old ranks of the CPF, none were more famed and feared than the tank brigades. Charging headfirst into any battle, the tank brigades were always able to snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat. However bad the odds may seem, many of the proud tankers protecting Lloyd to this day trace their days back either to the days of the CPF or the parents do. Nevertheless, the golden days of the CPF is gone, but even under a new banner, the old tankists fight with the same old fiery passion as they once did, keeping defeat at bay. Spear of the CPF. Ekaterina was a smart woman, certainly intelligent enough to ensure the backing of the tanker leadership for her plan. In the past days and weeks, she had engaged in numerous discussions, persuading many individuals of her vision for Lloyd's ministry. The majority were eager to rally behind her cause, while those who hesitated, well, they were silently dealt with. What is this? We remember your name. Darkness covered the city of Lloydminster, enveloping it in a sea of utter blackness. Not a sound it stirred, nor could a light be seen, save for one small office complex. Within its frigid halls was that of Commander Ekaterina and Natalia Bell. Two tankers dwelling in the midst of something vast and treasonous, surmounted in a paperwork that pertained to an invisible or inevitable coup. When the Spirit's commander made up her mind some time ago, she hadn't considered a sack of unsigned papers to be an important part of her scheme, but every loose end needed accounting for, no matter how dull the process may have been to some people. Stifling a yawn, she continued viewing the documents that lay before her. The words began to jumble and turn to mush, her eyelids suddenly feeling very heavy. She had been moments away from sleeping when a voice stirred her awake. Do you think Lydia enjoyed the aspect of the job? The quiet voice of N Natalia earned a quick snap of Ekaterina's gaze. The commander clenched her jaw, tensing up slightly. The thought of Lydia's passing still stung. No, not one bit, however. Were she here, she would have been already finished by this by now. Ekaterina stared at the papers. We probably wouldn't have gone through all this in the first place, Natalia corrected. She was right. It was Lydia's iron will that had kept the tankers going when time seemed darkest. By her and Solomon's will, had Lloyd's ministry been forged in the first place, Ekaterina missed her dearly. A waste of time, she muttered to herself. I miss her too, Ekaterina, Natalia said. Ekaterina looked up qu uh, quickly, cursing herself for showing off her emotions so easily. You're allowed to mourn to take time to process things. It's a healthy thing to do, Natalia whispered hopefully. When I have time, Ekaterina said, sternly, hinting that she wished for the topic to be dropped. She spoke highly of you when you were younger. When I stepped down, it was pretty clear who she was going to choose to fill in my role. She didn't want you to lose yourself. Ekaterina did not respond, instead opting to huff and continue working. She had no time for emotions. There were things to be done. Well, that's odd, Natalia muttered. She looked up. You really have no last name, Ekaterina. No, I'm never concerned me, Ekaterina huffed. Lydia was my family. I did not care for my parents, she added. She looked over at Natalia. I saw her staring down at the blue and pink sheet of paper. It looked familiar. A thought crossed her mind. May I? Of course. Thank you. Uh, Natalia passed her birth certificate, and Ekaterina picked up the pen. She hesitated, then made her a careful edit, donning the surname of a friend who would have lived, who should have lived longer, Ekaterina Donskoya. Hold on. Give me a second. I will really miss Lydia. Hey, let army be. The winds blow. No, your enemy. We can't do this one. But we can do this one. Combat language. Uh, father's gift. The teachings of the Soviet advisors lay the groundwork for our birth of the CPF. Centuries removed, they continue to steer our future, of course. We're pretty nice. And we only have three research slots. It's really bad. So let's take a look-see. Once it's done auto-saving. We have basic infantry support, aircraft, naval vessels, and exploitation tech. We have intermediate construction, industry, and vehicle tech. That's it. Not even electronics. No robotics. No special forces. No power armor. Nothing else. Oh my god. This is going to be difficult. This is not going to be pretty, my friends. And with a long march forward, in which we'll all kill each other. Um, are we out of guns? Of course we are. Are we making anything? We're making tanks. And scrap gun trucks. But we need guns. Hmm. Support equipment, we will need anti tank. Uh, I get that too, because, yeah. T 34s, huh? Funny. Very nice. Uh, so that's the case. We have 11 money. We can't do anything still. Crud. And the winds blow. The tanks of the CPF are some of the most feared assets in the northern wasteland. And while Ekaterina knew that she alone, or they wouldn't alone, wouldn't be enough to stop, topple Solomon and his followers, she knew well enough how important they would be in the upcoming war. Striking matches. Increase temp. Uh, tank temp by, by two. Because right now we have what? We have three divisions. Yeah, three divisions of this. 
Dark Rose, well, you're gonna become... You're level 4 already. Well, let's not be inspirational. We can be Gun Nut. We can be an animal friend. But that won't really help us. A local leader. But we don't need that yet. Uh, definitely a life giver. Bloody mess. Motorized demo support. Uh, reinforce rate. Uh, organization loss of moving would be good. A lead foot would probably be the one we choose here. Share motorized attack and defense. Yeah, that makes more sense. Let's keep looking first though. Inspirational, like I said. Local leader. Night person. Special forces. Fairness. Uh, I have special forces. Maybe a blood I'm gonna leave one opening for now. Mm. Yeah, let's leave one open for now. You're gonna be a leader of militia for now. Um, you're on level three. Yeah, you're already intelligent. Um, honestly, I'll probably give you life giver to start off, because we're gonna need that. Uh. I'm gonna go with rooted because you're gonna need more defense. Okay, so what do we have here? We have devices of men. Huh. Steel, not men. Oh, blood and steel. Interesting. Hmm. Military command. The uh, advisor's apathetic towards the nation's government as a whole. I'll say regardless of the outcome. Oh! Who knows better anyway? So that's pretty good to get. Alexander Simmons. As loyal towards the clergy. Sadie, she goes. Motorize. Hey, better motorize equipment. Oh, there's a spear, clergy, stubborn prick, Natalia Bell, tank women, less reliability, more soft attack, hard attack, and speed. Interesting. I like that we have options here. Sevo Dukov, apathetic, plus point three. I got three to captain of the spear, better conventional warfare, research speed. Or Theresa Lin, asymmetric warfare, clergy. So really, this is the one you want because you get more anyways. I mean, conventional warfare research speed is nice, but eventually we're gonna have it doesn't matter. Interesting. Battleford reject, almost glowing. We're gonna need to keep our energy cells up too. Um, apathetic, likes trains, towards clergy. State reformer towards a spear. I like the political power and stability. Clergy. Alright, and who do, we, who do we have down here? Daily compliance. Oh, that's nice. State friends of the clergy. But it doesn't matter because they give you more political power and daily intellectual support. Uh, which is the ministry. Where are the people? Clergy. Judicial icon. More political power, less damage garrisons. Lloyd the Fourth, that's the name. Don't wear it out. The shadow and the great eminence itself. Towards the spear. A lot of less stability. Stuck in her ways. Huh. Now what do we have here? Industrial backwater. Oh my god. Holy cow. New economic policy. Of course you lose population with that one. Um, Golden Gecko. Well. Melee, infantry, demos, fire teams, combat. Now there are vehicles here. Well, we're also going to go with the Golden Gecko. It's fine, it's fine. And then the wind blows, and like daggers, in her back. Dark clouds circle overhead. Trouble is brewing. We must rally the people to ensure we're ready for what is coming our way. Striking matches. Uh, you know what? I think it's okay to train. Do we have any more guns? No, God, no. We have no guns, so we have to buy some guns. Also, we're using Oral Blues, uh... Overall Blues Radio, Overall Blues Tech Expansion, Overall Blues Generic Decisions Revamped. So we got a couple things here. And a couple more guns will help out. Is it great? No. But it actually helped out quite a bit. Fire in the North, what happened? There are reports of an enormous explosion. Oh. Hello, in the North. St uh, Northern Strath Commune Territory. Accusations and rumors are flying. Was it a commune secret weapon? A vermilion attack? Or perhaps just the last gasp for the Americans? And even if there is a clear answer, who could trust the outcome? Well, hopefully, sort it out. Oh. Tyrants that are bored over the past couple hours. Our board of the Strath Commune has started to become saturated with hostile soldiers. Earthworks and gun emplacements are starting to be erected all across the western flank. However, their intentions are still unknown as they have failed to make any direct offensive overtures. Whether they're preparing for war or closing their borders, it falls to us to react in kind. What are they planning? So they have a lot of stuff here. And they have uh, 
that's not good. Uh, no, I'll try to do I assume we're going to get higher attacks, so we'll go with that one. Approached by another name. Strathcombe demands a right to interrogate uh, our high command regarding the conduct up north. A sure woman has the audacity to believe that we are behind the horror. Uh, we can give in to avoid bloodshed now, but this will open us up to a purge by the chairwoman, and we'll cripple our army. But dare we say no? If we do, she will launch an assault by a prelude to a full-fledged invasion. War will only lead to barbarism. Peace for our country. 350 days. We'll defend every meter of Canadian soil. Well, let's stop training then. Striking matches. These are the last ones. The cold voice of Ekaterina asked as ten tanks moved into the fueling station. Her hands were held behind the small of her back, facing the roaring machines as they parked themselves. Uh, negative. We await ten of the north and five from the south. A soldier informed her. Is there any evidence to suggest Solomon knows what's going on? Uh, Ekaterina asked. Negative, Commander. He's blind to it all. The soldier informed her. Good. Informed the new arrivals of her next plans. Dismissed. Ekaterina stated. The two soldiers saluted her before turning around. Ekaterina breathed out a sigh of relief and closed her eyes, emotions swirling around in her brain. She was nervous, loath as she was to admit it. Close and closer, they made progress towards their end goal, and despite how well it was going, Ekaterina had to battle with her anxiety and insecurities each time. Her thoughts had turned to Lydia, her predecessor. What would she consider all this? Was she supported, or would it disappoint her? Her emotions were starting to get the better of her. She steeled herself, it didn't matter. She was gone. That was that. Ekaterina was running an instinct, and the only thing keeping her from running away was her knowledge that the revolution demanded she push forward. A needed a leader, a guide, and Solomon had failed in his duties, leaving her to pick up the pieces. She opened her eyes and dispelled her worries. She would not fall, and simply she could not. More tanks entered the facility the last ones accounted for. It was time. Failure was not an option. We'll give us a few more days for uh, recovering our division, reco uh, you know, organization. Do we have at least we have at least one division per tile. Now obviously infantry is gonna be better than our militia, but you know we'll do the best we can. Our industry. Oof. Not ideal. Know your enemy. We're all but surrounded by factions birthed from the collapse of the CPF. Until now, we are content in letting them wallow in their own destitution. But with war on the horizon, we can afford to sit idly by and have instituted or issued an intelligence gathering operation to ensure we are prepared for what is ahead. Sounds good to me. And a brutish innovation. Communication lays at the hand of effective coordination. Never is this truer than when leading a tank brigade. We'll ensure we can read one another to, uh, on the battlefield through thick sheets of metal separating us. Though they're separating us. Ah, uh, the day of infamy. Lest we forget. I could use more tanks. But I have no more tanks to use. I think up next we're gonna grab the last advisor, maybe. And and the mouth of madness. The patriarch has set aside the evening for a quiet prayer. We would soon be distracted by the stench of hell. Hey, combat language. Look at that. Nice. I mean, this would help us out immediately, but the tides change. A cat thrown her breathed out a heavy sigh, her eyes shut tight as she listened to the sounds of the battle raging on outside. Adrenaline coursed through her mind, her anxiety is tempting to crack her. She maintained herself. She had to do this. A voice called out to her, Dukov's close by. We're nearly finished, it said. A cat thrown turned to face a voice and was greeted by the leader of her spy agency, Mikhail Volkov. We're doing the right thing, it got through, and you know that, right? He stared right at her. Of course, she responded sternly, half trying to convince herself. You'll see. This is what we have to do, Volkov said, seeing right through her facade. She opened her mouth to respond, but a door crashing open nearby stopped her, and came Sava Dukov, flanked by three soldiers. Held up by his arms was Patriarch Solomon himself, beaten and bloody. Thrown to the floor, he cried out in pain and looked up to Ekaterina, tears streaming down his, down his face. Why? Why have you done this to me? So many innocent people were harmed because of you, Solomon whimpered. How dare you accuse me of this? You're the one who did this. You forced my hand. Your apathy. Your blindness. You did this. And Katharina screamed at Solomon, himself becoming slowly more horrified as she went on. No, no, no. This isn't right. We could have fixed things. And Katharina, please. You can make this right. Call off your troopers and we'll talk things out. Please. Solomon pleaded. And Katharina looked him in the eyes. A sea of emotions flooded through her mind. One question constantly echoed through her mind. Was she doing the right thing? She turned around and began to pace around the room. I tried to speak to you. I tried to warn you. Only now do you plead for her forgiveness. How do I know you'll be true to your word? And Katharina asked. 
You can't be serious, Volkov muttered in horror. That scum sat around doing nothing while other people suffered. He must be judged for his crimes. Quiet, Katarina yelled at Volkov before turning her attention to Solomon. I shouldn't forgive you. The people deserve justice. But if you and your people can promise to work with us for the good of the nation, I'll let you walk free. She pursed her lips, her eyes narrowing towards Solomon. This hasn't been the plan, but seeing him on the ground crying, it hurt her. Okay, you're right. I let apathy consume me. But if you'll forgive me and my people, I'll promise we can work together. Solomon lifted his head and tried to force a smile in spite of his bloody mouth. So that's something like this never happens. Thank you, Akat. A gunshot rang out. Solomon fell to the floor as blood began to gush out his neck, slight gurgles escaping his mouth before he fell silent. What have you done? What you couldn't, Volkov said before leaving the room. Lukov and the soldiers followed him out, leaving her with the corpse of Solomon, regret choking her. Look at that. The spear of the CPF was composed of the greatest heroes of the past, with many in the ministry tracing their lineage back to the original members of the battalion. Now that we rest away the clergy's power over the people, we can begin honor our heroes and the goals they fought for, which is interesting. Huh. Huh, nice. So now we're going to have some choices here. Forefront War. Oh, God. Uh, issuing our own order number 227. Allowing to proclaim not one step back. Well, this is costly and likely make a political commissar to lose their life, much to save the ministry. Death Battalions. Get a unit leader. An all women sniper battalion of death. But Vilchenko will be more blood to help our armored forces. Ooh. People's Vanguard. More political power, which I do like. Restore the 5th Brigade. Reinstate the 5th Tank Brigade. Tsarskaya. On down the Forgotten Tanks. The Giants of the Past. So, how many more days do we have? 44 days. We need to have more divisions out immediately. So this one would be good. The Death Battalion would, sounds like it would be good too. Um, a key tenet of our doctrine is our ability to withdraw and re-engage the enemy at will. This approach becomes problematic when the defense of the homeland is at stake and when every piece of land and resource we, will, we give up falls in enemy hands. When ensure the men are aware of their duty to hold the line when needed, a new military order shall be introduced to the Codex. Order number 227. Or 227, yeah. Not one step back. We'll see about that one first. I want more uh, arm XP. Apathetic. Spear. Oh, we have at least guys left. Nice. Um, is there anything that would help us out immediately? Honestly, the high command might be the way to go. I was going to hurt our reliability, which I don't like. More attack and speed. This will help everybody out, though. Hmm. I do like this one, though. Chief of the Army, LOI, do it yourself. Well, there you go. Oh, you're not hired somewhere else. This would probably be really good to do. Uh, Army organization regain, which is nice. I do want more stability and political power, though. So after that one, restore the 5th Brigade. Among the CPS battle tanks, Lydia Donskoy's Tsarkaya, or known to be the finest of them all. I like it carried all the way to Lloyd Minster. After her passing, the ministry's scheming clergy moved to abolish a core and any associated honor of the fix. Lydia's legacy lives on through a kind of arena. The tankers ready to lay down their lives for whom they view as the reincarnation of the legendary captain. Good. As they should. So what is this? We lose weekly war support and get a lot more defense in core territory. And you get 20% more war support. But you're going to lose a crap ton of war support. I mean, in the end, you lose a little bit. You lose some. Not a ton, but some. That's still quite a bit. Civilized tech. Max factories in the state. Uh, it's factory output, maybe? Battle plans. Nice. Well, at least we've got more planning speed. And uh, three more divisions. Good. Good, 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 good. My god, are we going to need these? Oh, tankers? Do we have any support equipment? Because right now, the militia that we're using... The defense is 46. These tankers in general are 106. Can I just convert you guys to tankers? We're out, we'd run out of manpower immediately. Uh... This is not going to be pretty. This is going to be difficult. So it's low. Brought tons of support equipment and money. But can we buy something? It helps out just a wee bit. 
Or just how much we need. Oh, and there we go. We all honor the heroes who fought in the Great War, the people who fought for freedom, the people. But it's a shame, is it not, that some do not anymore? Let's end the charade and save Canada. This is the end of the beginning. Oh, crap. Uh, so what I'm thinking of, they want to attack us here. We're going to go around and try to do an encirclement as best as we possibly can. A war on four fronts. And a sudden escalation of tensions. Strathcom, you know, high on war fervor, following the de nuclear detonation in the territory several months ago, has thrust the Canadian plains and yet to another large conflict. The army and arm Amy Terese's Terese's party's outrage seemed to have boiled over into full blown revolutionary zeal, with the nation declaring war not only on Lloyd's ministry but also on the Pioneer Company, a pre war mercenary army occupying large swaths of the former CPF territory. Not only this, but strange robots emerging from the old Relcom facility in Grand Prairie to take advantage of the chaos. Will's aggressive attack pay off for the Strath Commune? Or will be a race to Redmond for all those who seek to take advantage of the arm Amy Terese's recklessness? Terese's recklessness, yeah. Redmond is within reach. Well, we'll see. Paranoid, War Industrial Commissar. Oh, God. Hey, we did really well here, though. We might lose a tile or two, but, you know, it is what it is. Hey, you go here. Go in around and dig around him. Just start digging. Uh, you might actually do something here, too. Huh? Lac La Biche? Maybe? What matters the most is encirclements. If you can't do that, we might as well not even play. Oh, Katharina, yeah. But we're gonna choose. Stop. I wonder if there's like a mechanic here where we can choose to get cooed. Is that, is that possible? I mean, we are we're playing as reds. That's often happen, happen fast. Good. I'm down for gods and tanks. A routine survey expedition returns to our full with exceptional news. Hey, look at that. Fantastic. Where, where are you going? I didn't say you could leave. Increase your strength by doing that. Uh, you answered yourself. Good job, guys. Good. Good job. There's no answer down here, though. That would be quite bad. out here. God, I told you not to get encircled. Sorry, that's my phone. Nice. Nice job. Uh, let those guys deal with that over there. You might actually make, make take out Smoky Lake. Maybe. You hold. You make sure that they're, they're not allowed to move. You're going to go down and around and see what you can do. There you go. You have some, well, at least one segment here. Good. Son, where are you going? I want you here. Son from the front? Uh, I like the political power, but we're going to go with war support for now. Therapy relief is over. It's fine. It's whatever. Ah, no wonder we're taking forever. There's special forces down there. It must be very muddy or something here. Throwing all our tanks. Get in there. Do a hold. Hello? Factories are nice. Huh. Well, we'll go with that one next. And we're going to go with the crossroads. The giants of the past. Do you know why we're always sent on ta these types of missions? Lev asked his tanker friend, Joseph. Quite clearly, it's because we're the best, Joseph responded, surveying the surrounding cliffs. If that's the case, I ought to try less. This place gives off an eerie vibe, Lev muttered. <clears throat> Uh, aren't you scared, love? Joseph asked, clearly mocking him. Don't start, I'm not in the mood for it. Joseph merely laughed, taking a swig from his flask. The two journeyed on for some time, the winter storms around them growing more powerful. Joseph was in the middle of retelling a story when he froze in his tracks. He stared through his binoculars inquisitively, seemingly enamored with what he saw. What? Why'd you stop? Are we in danger? Love asked frantically, reaching for his gun. Joseph did not respond. Instead, he removed his binoculars from his eyes, and then he rubbed them, looking back through the binoculars right after. Joseph, what the heck are you looking at? 
Lev twitched nervously, so trying to get his compatriots' attention. Once again, Joseph did not respond. He simply moved the binoculars and handed them to Lev, his eyes still fixed on what was in front of them. Let me see. This better not be a joker, I'll swear all. Lev left the sentence hanging, repeating the previous motions that Joseph did. In the heart of the blizzard lay a frozen field of dormant tanks, stretching as deep into the distant white as the eye could see. We need to bring them home. Ooh. We need to study them. Improve their tank damage. Now, what does that mean? Do we, we, we need tanks now, but does that mean, like, what do you mean by we improve our tank template? Because I'd rather have them now, or we could study them. Honestly, tanks are okay. You know what? We're going to study them. So what does it do to this? Oh, does it just give us more? Oh, does it fill it out more? Ooh. So that's not looking good here. If that's the case, could you go down and around there? Maybe? Here, just help them out here. Uh, what do we have got next? We live and die by your command. The sweet smell of gunpowder. Worse of cost, better break than heart attack. The death battalion. Well, let's go with this one. People's gunpowder. A Catherine wields the unflinching support of much of the Ministry's armed forces. Having worked her way up to a leadership position, though, through not but the sweat of her own brow, in many ways, she is the living embodiment of the ideals of the revolution. On a guiding light for the ambitious young men and women of the Tanker Corps. If that's the case, just go in, it's fine. Is anyone going in here? Yes, good. Improvised tools? Yes, please. Can you go all around them? That would be nice. Can you make a decisive statement here, perhaps? Yes, no, maybe so. And if you move fast enough, you can get all the way down to there. That would be kind of nice. Consolidate and attack. Ah, oh, they have another division there too, huh? Very interesting. Oh, you don't even need to do that. You can just do this. Yeah, get over there first. There you go, two divisions for one. Hey! What a beautiful thing. Yeah. They, they have a lot of divisions to start, but if they're not smart about it, they're going to lose them all. How about you hold? There you go. You're going to need divisions again here, because we can easily get encircled here. Could be a very bad thing. There you go. Go in. Go in. Go in. There you go. A celebration? Oh, if you're about that, please go ahead. Boom. Not too important. Oh, focus on the machines. Oh. Capitalists, the hardliners. Well, honestly, I think we're doing okay right now. We need more guns. Well, what else is new? Can we actually buy more guns? We barely have any money. No. We need point, not even half a dollar more. Keep these guys in place for now. Let these guys deal with it for now. That's fine. Uh, as much as I would love to radically attack, it's not in the cards for us right now. You know what? Just go up here. There we go. Keep those guys in place for now. And you go there, you go there. See what you can do. If you could help out here, that would be fantastic. People's vanguard in the forefront of war. The crimson band is fluttering and the smell of gunpowder fills the air. At last, the jackals feasting in the CPF's carcass are making a play for power. They'll be shattered when faced with the righteous steel. Oh, get more divisions. That's nice. You know, I'm going to sacrifice it. You're going to force the defense. I don't care what happens. You're going to win here. You're going to come down here. Back to here. Are you kidding me? Bro, you suck. You suck really hard. Are you up there yet? Come on. Drive those things harder and faster. Since we're here, vehicle text. Less, slightly, slightly, slightly less vehicle use. Get, go in. Just help finish them off faster. There you go. Woo! That's good. That's good. Uh, I need you to drive up here. This guy's busy. Okay, why did you just let him leave? Hello? 
Let him go. You don't need to do that either. Come on. I start thinking here. Fort Saskatchewan, eh? Alright. Chief of Navy, High Command. You know what? Uh, where are we going? Ah, they're attacking us too, eh? Hmm. Urbanization is fine. Slightly more political power, that's fine. Really zero, I don't really care. Uh, Fort Saskatchewan, clean out. Lloyd Mister will not fall. Uh, as we push further into the lands of the commune, it becomes evident that fear is taking hold. As the scramble will step over one and another to flee the fort front lines, they leave band veritable catches of goods and weaponry to fuel our advance. Okay. Hey, look at these guys. Different type of tankers, but that's alright. Go, 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 come on. Yeah, they still have 37 divisions, my god. That's insane. Can you hurry the heck up? Is there any sort of clean break we can make here? So you can go down here to here to there. We need to keep these guys in place. Boom to boom to boom. Like that. I want you out here. I don't want you getting circled, just in case. We are getting pinched a little bit. Why did you leave? No! Oh my god. Why did you leave? Are you stupid? How stupid are you? Jesus Christ. Okay, you're gonna attack us here, then we're gonna win here then. Start attacking them there then. Mm. Yeah, stupid, stupid commander. Stupid, 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 incredibly stupid commander there. Where 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 are you going? You lost the battle. You suck. Move faster. You have to move faster than this. Uh, give no quarter. Lloyd Mister will not fall. The people are well aware that we're the last true bulwarks of the revolution. Their cheers of encouragement echo from behind and give us the strength we need to push on. Oh my god. You should be done with that battle already. Get in there. 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 Use the infantry to do that. That would be nice. That would be good. Get in there too. Get your butts in there. Come on. Good. Now crush them. Can you do anything here? Of course, we're over these guys too, which is really not good too. Hello? I told you not to get encircled, and then you get encircled. How stupid are you? Apparently, very. You couldn't win if you tried to save your own life, could you? Not let them leave. You might as well help them out, if possible. Well, we've got more tankers now. Come on. You know what? You're gonna go this way first. 
but Mr. will not fall given a quarter. No matter what crosses over the ridge of plain and river, the counter-revolutioners will be stopped. They will be pursued, and eventually, God willing, they'll be delivered to the justice they have eluded for so long. Very true. Don't let them leave. You, you might as well just kill yourselves off there, but still. Are you kidding me? Okay, so this is a waste of time. These tanks are, are way too slow. Tanks are slow as crap, my god. Kill them off. Come on, kill them off. Mm. You both go in here. I'm going to sacrifice them if I have to. Special forces, not so much. Better supply use. Where are you going? Can you not be stupid? And you're gonna force defense. I don't care at this point. I'd rather that division die. It's gonna die anyways. Get rid of their enemy divisions. If I lose one for their two, so be it. Come on. There you go. Let's take over to Petro Chico. That's fine. Fairly aggressive in this one so far. No, you have to kill them off. I don't care how much you want to recover. If you let them recover, they will recover. See, so we got rid of one division then. Much better. You've had enough time to heal up. Give them a quarter, good. Um, Daniel's Reserve. Oh, the ID team. The ID team of Ravager of the Maintenance work just in the nick of time. They'll be key to helping us pierce the enemy lines. Yeah. That'll be good. Get over here. Because our guys are, are exhausted. Ooh. Money. Guns. Hmm. I can all right there. Cap, let's grow up more base. More intellectual support, which I don't want. Reconnaissance. Uh, spear. Political power, stability, which I do like. Army reorganization gain rate. We're good on energy. High command steady she goes. That's not bad. Mountaineer. We can always get this guy later, too. Stubborn prick. Loyalty with the spear. Uh, how about steady she goes? Whether it's from the back of a, a scrap truck or the seat of a motorcycle, Elias Mikoshi has always believed in the idea that an army on the move cannot be stopped. A firm advocate for mobile warfare, Mikoshi and the tankers have always had a tight-knit relationship when it comes to fighting across the north. Uh, actually, I might wait to do this one. Let's wait to do that one. This is more uh, population because we're, we're out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're full on out. we got no one else to throw out here now. And who do we have for occupied territories? Caravan guards, pacification, militia's well, good. Uh. I don't see anybody here. Well, I guess we're going in. I see Head Valley. No, I'll do it here. Because we're really lacking a lot of stuff, especially men. You can always buy more guns, but you can't buy more men. Well. Depends what time of place you are at in history. Hey, Redmond in flames. Reports are flooding from the north of the city of Redmond. The capital of the Strath Commune is up in flames following occupation by enemy forces in the commune's ongoing struggle for control over fractured Alberta. Amy Terry sees there has been made manifest as the very insurgents she sought to destroy now march her capital streets unopposed. Many onlookers hope that this may be the beginning of the end of the Canadian People's Front as they know it, but in the Canadian Plains one step closer to lasting peace. One time will tell the now battered communes resolve will be strong enough for the forces to turn the tide. This war isn't finished just yet, though. Oh, yeah. It's not over yet. It's definitely not over yet. Uh, 
You know what? How about you just go in here? Hey, we got strength coming. Good. Can I cut them all off? Yes, we did most of the work, so we deserve pretty much everything here. Well, that's good. But now we're still on a two-front war. And let's see who's going to be easier to take out. So, the big grass has got fewer divisions. The Pioneer Company is probably the one we're going to focus on first. So, let's focus all most of our divisions down here. We're going to sacrifice some of the space from with big grass to sacrifice that first. Uh, reasonable demand, yeah. Ooh, that might have been a big mistake. They got a bunch of ghouls down there, huh? Tanks, what are you doing? Why would you go over there? Hello? Whatever. The spear's armored thrust. With the tank battalions fielded and in full fighting capacity, we have enough tools at our disposal to adopt the spear formation. It involves an armored squadron advancing in the shape of an arrowhead, slicing through the center before blasting the enemy from behind as they circle back to our lines. Very nice. More organization, yes please. Your fortification is even better. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Where are my tanks? Why are you going this way? Questions I ask. Because of how stupid sometimes the AI really is. You have a hole in your lines and you're not moving to fill it in? Bruh. There you go. That should take him out. Nice. You hold. You go back here. You stay there. Look at this. Now this is nice. It's a bit dumb because you left it open, but whatever. You are going to crash down from the north. You are going to hold there. You're going to do that. That would be good. Nice. Good. Now I can support the attack. See this side up here? Don't really care. Get stuff out here too. Hey! North Redman! Hey, we can make some money! Bunch of capitalists making money, but whatever. Feel dirty. Pop them out. Nice, good job guys. Finally did something right. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to use infantry or militia. Obviously militia is not as good as infantry, but still. Still. Let us get on the front line first and see what happens. Except for you guys. I want to see if you can actually get across the river, because it's it does take a while to get across. Okay. I want them to lead the assault. Take the other tanks too to help them out. Good. And get more tech too. Uh, the ministry's bulwark. Interesting. With the majority of the CPF former citizens backing down, we finally have peace after so long greatly boosts compliance of land that was controlled by the Big Grass and Strath Commune. Unfortunately, due to the stubbornness of the 6th Brigade, this will slightly boost resistance in former Pioneer Company land and commune raids. All is fair in love and war, including requisition of means of production for the sake of the greater good. The Death Battalion. Back when their minds were so sharp, the Soviet advisors would speak fondly of their women's courage and defiance in the bloody years of the legendary Great Patriotic War. What better way to honor their legacy than carry on their legend and spirit? Sound from the front? I still want more war support. Still love it. So do we have any tanks up here? Yes, we do. Go and do that. We're looking pretty good right now. Uh, let, let our guys move around a little bit first. Why would you go there? That obviously makes no sense. Why would you go there? Go in here. They do have a division guard in the capital, which I would expect nothing less from that. I'm not foolish enough to think that we can make a general attack just yet. But in time, we will. Beautiful. That's the case. You guys help out. And help out. Ah, Paulus. Your warband. I'm going to forget to do play as them, too. So, what's left? 17 versus 14, and we have 14. We're looking pretty decent. Um, hmm. We can cut off the divisions in the north. Oh, Big Grass is actually moving pretty hard against us, too. Well, what if we just did this? You guys go. They're just going to go for VPs. You 
you are gonna. Well, I'm not sure why you're not doing anything, but you're gonna go to Cynthia. Let's see if we can do anything from that, from that direction. Uh, you go to Horberg. Get down to Audrey or wherever else. Uh, yeah. And you know what? I did say I want the group there to go here. Go here. Urban planning's nice. The death battalion. New weapons would be nice to live and serve the people. Uh, this one. The cat during a stretch around Lloyd Minster with a flame in her eye and infectious vigor. How can the men not fall behind someone with such genuine conviction? So now you're going to be placed up here to help hold the front. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Bob Lejenko. Oh, Mikuluna H. Level four, receptive. Uh, not like others. There's life giver. I'm gonna be a local leader. Other than that, we're gonna wait and see. Slightly, slightly. That's very slightly more political power. There you go. Good. See selection. Hey, another encirclement. Great. Fantastic. Uh, break for Nordeg. Because if it just be 1v1, that would be great. Okay, we got him. Welcome back. Grand Prairie. So we've done very well so far. They've up to 2 to 14 divisions. We have 15, so we automatically have more than them already. And we have a little bit of money. Can we buy any more guns? Do we need more guns? Um, No, we're actually really good on guns, too. Go figure. Uh, let's see. Do live and serve the people. Can't do anything here. Big grass. Okay. Uh, let's see. Funding the Link Tanker Corps. Ooh. You get spec op stuff. May unlock unique opportunities in the future. Basic special forces tech and to walk among giants. Intermediate special forces stuff. Ooh. Versus combined arms. Convention of motorized warfare. Full throttle. Basic special forces tech. Dedicated medic corps. Oh man, I don't know. I might just go with combined arms. Just because... I mean, this is full motorized, and that's the route we're going with, so... A soldier's prayer. Or prayers. Death of Towns and Traitors. We live and die by your command. Following a Catherine's ascension to the ranks of captain, we will observe a kind of fervor within our own troops not seen since our initial arrival to Lloydminster. Every day, more and more men and women show up to recruitment offices, willing to lay down their life to defend our beloved motherland. But I think I went there. We're actually doing really well. I knew this would be difficult... And we got a little dicey here and there, but we're actually doing very well. And we'll finish off this war in the next episode. If you enjoyed this video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll finish this war with Ekaterina Donskoya. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.